So uh, yeah, hi everybody, uh, thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Maud, I'm a developer on the Chrome Security and Privacy team and today I'm with uh, my colleague Milica. Uh, hey who, everyone. Uh, who will be following along the workshop. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's awesome to have you all here today to run the workshop on two-factor authentication with a security key, which uh, can actually be a phone. Um, so yeah, let's let's dive right in um, and um, the workshop. Yeah, welcome. As I said, so um, uh, we can start with a little run through of the agenda. Um, so in the first, uh, thank you. In the first, um, in the first part of the of this workshop, um, this will be mostly an introduction, and also we'll be going through some setup steps together, or you will be going through some setup steps that are necessary for you to be able to follow the workshop. Um, this will this will last about 30, 35 minutes, and this is an important uh, piece of the workshop. Um, once you're all set up, we will be able to actually, uh, you know, uh, get hands on and write some code together uh, to implement what uh, I'll tell you about, so credential registration and uh, two-factor authentication. Um, I think this may be about 40 minutes. These are estimates, of course. Um, and then if we if we have time left, which is not a given, but in case we have time left, we'll try and uh, answer a few questions or look into um, some code enhancements um, on top of the basic code we'll have written. And finally, uh, we'll end up with some with some wrap up and, and goodbyes. And the whole uh, duration of the workshop is expected to be about 90 minutes. Um, we will have uh, we'll have like a little a break at the at the setup point, so at the 35 ish minute mark um, right uh, so this is our agenda uh, so we can dive right in and start about uh, start with the introduction and and set up and um, in this piece I will also uh, ask you a few questions so um, be ready for that uh, you'll see a poll popping up uh, in a few slides but first um, yeah um, let's talk a little bit about what you can expect uh, from this workshop mm. So what you will learn today, hopefully, at the end of the workshop, um, is uh, the basics of web authentication. The second thing you will learn is how to implement two-factor authentication with a security key or a phone as a security key, which will need to be an Android phone. But uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in the actual set of steps. And we will also have a chance to uh, cover some best um, user interface and user experience uh, practices when you're using uh, WebAuthn, which is the API we'll be using today. Um, now to the things we will not cover, uh, just because 90 minutes is actually not that long time. Um, we will not cover how you can migrate from your current authentication system uh, into WebAuthn. Um, we will not cover how to build a FIDO server. So FIDO is, uh, stands for Fast Identity Online. And you can think of it as the server that will deal with the really um, authentication logic uh, for this workshop. And this is actually OK for you to not uh, learn right now today how to build a FIDO server, because in a real application, you would typically also rely on the library uh, for that. Um, so it's fine for us to not dive into the details. Um, but just know that uh, in a real application, you would rely on the library. And as uh, when you typically rely on libraries, you would need to do some due diligence about you know, uh, the, the quality uh, of uh, this library code and um, whether this is doing what you actually expect it to do. Right, we will not also dive too deep into account recovery techniques. Uh, and we will also not talk about the future of WebAuthn. Um, all of that, we will, you will have a chance to ask questions about these topics in a, in a different channel. I'll come to that, but just so you know what, you, what, what to expect for, for this workshop today. Right. Um, quick disclaimer, as I just mentioned, we'll only have time to cover the basics. And you will see that WebAuthn is actually a pretty uh, wide topic, potentially. Um, but what we will do is that this workshop you see today um, first is recorded. So we'll post a link um, to the recording once that becomes available. And the second thing we'll do is at some point uh, in the future, we will uh, sometime soon, we'll be posting a more complete version of this workshop in a written format. So really more like a code tutorial. Um, so we'll be posting that on Twitter um, in a 
from both these accounts. So uh, if this is something you're interested in, um, make sure to, um, to check it out. Right, um, a few guidelines for the workshop, uh, just uh, to make sure that you know we have time to go through the topics we would like to go through together today. Um, we'll be running through all of the code examples, like all of the code together, um, in case you're stuck. So in case you're following the workshop steps uh, and something is preventing you uh, from you know uh, following the workshop properly or going to the next step if you encounter an error or anything, um, Please ask your question on the chat and prefix it with the word blocked so that you know we get a heads up and know you're blocked and can you know pause and help you resolve your issue um, uh, to make sure you can follow along. If you have a question or are just curious about you know one piece of code we just uh, looked at, um, also ask your question on the chat, but don't prefix it with blocked. And uh, for these questions that will sit up in the chat, we'll um, try and cover these in the end of the workshop if we have time left. And otherwise, uh, we'll let you know how you can um, how you can get answers for this. Um, great. Um, so, what are we going to build today? The web application we will start with. So, the startup code. Uh, it's a little small right now, but it will be very basic. It will be just uh, think of it as a log login page with a username and a password. And upon successful login, this will, redir this will redirect you to an account page, uh, which will initially only display your username. And you'll be able to then you know, sign out. Uh, so the user flow um, is um, super basic. It will be, will, you know, you'll just have these two pages, index.html and account.html. This is what I've just described. So this is what you'll start with. And um, what you'll end up with, so what we will be building together. Um, first, um, in order to support web authentication with the second factor, what you will need uh, today for this workshop is a credential. I will explain in more detail what this is. But the first thing we'll need is to add a credential management um, UI uh, into the, we'll build it into the account uh, page. Uh, so this is what you can see here with the two-factor authentication possibility to add a credential. And this year, we will display a list of registered credentials. Um, once we'll have that, we'll be able to actually build a more elaborate login flow that actually uh, enables users that have a credential registered to uh, go through um, a second authentication uh, step. So uh, once we have that, uh, what you'll be building is that this second uh, two-factor authentication page, which will prompt uh, the user for um, a credential, so which could be, um, you know, touching their security key or um, or tapping the right button on the prompt on their phone. Right. So yes, this is what I just mentioned. So if we compare that with the initial, you know, user flow for the starter application, uh, you will have the, here this extra step where. And we will check if the user is set up for two-factor authentication. If they are, we will ask them to authenticate with the second factor. And if they're not, um, we will just accept their correct password as a sufficient way to, uh, to log in. Right. Uh, can maybe pause here just, uh, just for a second and check if you have any questions on that. Um, and if you do, uh, please ask them on the chat. Um, or unmute yourself and, and ask a question. I don't see any question right now. So uh, yeah, feel free to ask if anything is unclear at this stage. Great. Um, cool, moving on. Um, let's take a quick look at uh, web authentication in short. Um, what is it about? What is this API? Thank you. Um, so web authentic stands for uh, web authentication API. And this is really the main API we'll be looking into today. And you will see that the API surface itself, it's a web API, but the API surface itself is really simple. It's basically, we'll be focusing on um, two simple calls. I'll come to that when we look at the code. Um, and um, the idea behind WebAuthn is that it's a standardized and phishing resistant protocol that can be used uh, in any web application for, uh, for authentication. This is the, um, quick overview 
Um, so how does it work exactly? Um, the way this works is it relies on public key cryptography um, and users creating private public key pairs instead of a password. Um, I'll just pause here for a second just to let you know that um, in this workshop today, we'll be using WebAuthn for um, two-factor authentication. There are other use cases for that. Uh, and our first factor will still remain a password. Um, this doesn't undermine any of the benefits of WebAuthn, but just so you're not surprised, we'll be using both a traditional password and as a second factor, a WebAuthn credential. Um, Great. Uh, so um, as I mentioned, um, in case you're not too familiar, the only important thing to remember about uh, you know, uh, public key cryptography is that um, it relies on a private public key pair. So you have a private key that uh, would be um, stored on the user device security. This is a secret. And the public key will be sent to a server for storage. These are the very basics of, of WebAuthn. And, um, the benefits are twofold. First, um, because the public key is nothing secret and is what is stored in the in the server, um, it means you have no shared secret between uh, the client and the server, and so this makes databases less attractive to act to to attackers. And the second interesting aspect of uh, WebAuthn is that contrary to passwords, um, the credentials you create uh, for WebAuthn are actually um, scoped to a given site. So what this means is that if you create a credential for site that example, it would it cannot be used on evil site that example, and it, that means that uh, you cannot reuse credentials across sites, and which is different from passwords, and this makes credentials um, phishing resistant. Good. So these are the benefits for uh, for WebAuthn. As I mentioned, we have two main use cases uh, at the moment, and uh, we'll be focusing today on uh, the two-factor authentication use case. Um, the great thing about WebAuthn is, although um, it's, a, it's a relatively new standard, it is very well supported across all, all major browsers, so be it Chrome, Edge, uh, Firefox, and Safari. If you have time at the end of the, uh, of the workshop, I can detail that a little bit more in the sense that the core features of WebAuthn are very well supported. If you want to go the extra step um, and um, have an implementation that is a little more um, future-proof, you will need to take uh, to, to add some code to make sure this is compatible across browsers. Um, but this is more of a detail, and the key thing to remember is that browser support is really good for, for WebAuthn. Um, before I move on, maybe I can pause here in case we have any question on um, on my button right now. Um, if you're shy and don't want to unmute yourself, you can also ask your question in a written form uh, in the chat. Okay, um, I will move on. A uh, quick glossary about WebAuthn, and then we'll be done with all the with all the talk um, soon. Simon, you have a question oh, from yeah. Augustine. How does WebAuthn work with Zanzibar? Um, thanks for the question. I don't know the answer to that, actually. Um, can you? What I would suggest is because I don't have the answer to that, I'll take the question. And um, as we wrap up the workshop, I'll point you to a place where we'll have a chance to answer uh, your question namely the Discord server. I'll come to that later. Um, great. That's it for now. Great. Uh, cool. Um, quick glossary. Um, maybe you're already familiar with these terms. Maybe not. Um, that's an interesting thing with WebAuthn. When you're ramping up, there are terms you may need to be learning. So those are like the very basics of what you need to know today in order to follow the workshop. So first important concept is the credential. The credential is the private public key pair. Um, you know, the public part of it is stored on the server and the private, uh, the private part is like on the authenticator, which is um, either a software or a hardware that will be uh, generating your, your credentials and also assert possession of a given credential. Um, so you can think of it as the authenticator is basically either, uh, either your security key physical security key, um, if you have one, or uh, it may be uh, a phone. Um, 
and both a security key and a phone are uh, called roaming authenticator because you can basically use them um, pretty much with any device you would be trying to log in uh, with. And uh, this is opposed to, so roaming authenticators are uh, the one we'll focus on today and the other type of authenticator you have are platform authenticators and these are typically uh, touch ID on, on, a, on a Mac. So these are the ones that are built into a, a given device. So long story short, authenticator for today, it's gonna be either your security key or your phone. Uh, next term we'll need is the relying party. So the relying party is pretty much the, it's gonna need to be your website or your website's server more specifically. Um, it's the party that is relying on a, on a, you know, a given uh, authenticator in order to uh, help to have users log in. Um, right. And finally, FIDO server, again, as I mentioned briefly in the intro, you don't really need to um, know what FIDO server does in detail, but just remember that this is the type of server that actually takes care of the uh, more um, lower level authentication logic. Right, if you're uh, clear with these terms, uh, this is pretty much like all, you know, what you need for today. So um, let me just briefly walk you through uh, in detail how the registration, how the flow works for WebAuthn. So you have two important pieces to the um, to a WebAuthn uh, two-factor authentication flow. The first piece is going to be uh, registering a credential. Um, and in order to do that, uh, you can see on the right, the blue is pretty much uh, pretty much like the the user or the user's device. Uh, and on the left, it's going to be the website or the relying party. Um, and the way this would work is in case you want to create a new uh, account, um, the server is going to ask for a public key. So the public key part of the credential, you will be creating a new key pair via your authenticator um, and using the WebAuthn API, and then uh, send the public part of that to the, to the server. This is in order to just create a credential, and then later on, you're going to uh, want to use that credential for actual two-factor authentication in our case today. Um, so in order to do that, the server will ask you to sign some specific data that you will be uh, signing with the private key that's uh, by, uh, on your authenticator, uh, send the signature back to the server who will be verifying it. And if it looks good, it means uh, you are who you say you are and uh, you have successfully um, uh, been through the second factor authentication step. This will become much clearer once we actually look at some code, but this is just a quick overview. Um, now, before moving on, it would be helpful for us to uh, understand like uh, um, what, uh, how well do you know WebAuthn and how, uh, how you're set up for this workshop. Um, so for this, um, I'll ask uh, Haley to um, launch the poll. So you should see a little window pop up uh on the on the chat uh, interface that's asking you the question number one in a few seconds sorry just a moment um Haley, are you able to launch the poll It has been launched. I see people responding. Oh, great. OK, awesome. It looks like it's launched. Yes, I had no idea this API existed, so no. So this is good. You'll be learning a lot, hopefully, today. Yes, exactly. Thanks, Chris. So there's a little notification bubble in the corner of your screen um, on the, yes. bottom left icon. Bottom right. <laughs> <laughs> OK, sorry about that. Um, either bottom right or bottom left or your screen, you should see a little window, uh, like what window pop with a question. Cool, well, a couple of votes. OK, right. Um, Holes in the triangle. OK, sorry, you probably need to click the little triangle 
square and circle icon before maybe be able to see the poll. So make sure to click that because we have like two more questions. Um, I think we can probably, um, how many answers do we have? We have a majority. Yeah, okay. So yeah, uh, so most of you are not familiar with the with the WebAuthn uh, API. So this is first, this is good to know. And uh, we can move on to the next uh, next question for you. Which will be, ah, sorry, that I will show here. Have you already set up a security key or phone for this workshop as documented in the set of steps? Um, so, yeah, this has popped up. Great. I'll give you a few seconds to answer that. Um, no worries if not. It's just for us to understand um, uh, how much time we want to allocate to that today. Um, oh, oh, there's a message here. Sorry, just a sec. <laughs> okay, Chris is saying, I did, but it's on a different phone, which I can go grab. Yes, Chris, now is a good moment to, to grab your phone, uh, which you've already set up. Um, Chris, <laughs> yes. All right. Well, let me check. Cool, we have a bunch of those here. Um, okay, so not about half half, but um, a bunch of you have haven't yet uh, gone through the setup steps. So this is good to know. And the third um, question uh, we will be asking, so we can move on to the third question for uh, this poll is. Um, more of an information, if you don't have an Android phone or if you don't have a physical security key handy, you're going to have to use DevTools. It would be useful for us to know if this is your case. So answer yes to that question if you have neither an Android phone or a security key handy. Right. Is this your case? No. So I understand right now, looking at the numbers, that most of you actually have a security key on Android phone handy. Let's give it a few more moments. All right. Good, so um, no worries, uh, it's going to work out also with DevTools. Um, I will say though that the user interface for DevTools is going to be a little bit different because you can think of DevTools as really an emulator for a physical security key or a phone. And um, it works out for the purpose of this workshop, but what you will see in your browser is going to look a little bit different. Um, this is not a problem, but just so you know, don't be surprised. I will be using a secu physical security key. So don't be surprised uh, if what you see on your screen, specifically the native browser pop-ups um, are probably not go going to, to be shown in the same way for you. So don't be surprised if what you have doesn't look exactly like uh, what I have right now. Good, um, great. So where are we now? Uh, Set up, so yeah, we're coming close. Um, as we've just seen on the poll, um, not everybody has had a chance to go through the setup steps. And this is important because you're going to need an authenticator in order to be able to follow this workshop, either phone security key or dev tools. So um, the setup steps were not sent with the reminder email. Okay, this is good to know, uh, thank you. It's no worries, we have time. We will take some a few minutes now to for you to go through the setup steps. So um, I'll be pasting a link in the call um, and uh, this is linked to a worksheet uh, which contains a section called before the workshop. And from now, we will give you about 10 minutes um, to go through this set of steps. Um, so let me paste, let me paste the link. Um, this is the setup doc. Uh, there it is. Cool. Great, there you go. Um, everybody should have access to that document. Um, 
And actually, let me, let me just briefly share what's on there, just so you've seen it. Um, this is pretty straightforward. You will have a few steps to go through, and um, you, it is, uh, it's going to be important for you to actually uh, test, you know, set up and test whether you're using an Android phone or an actual security key. Um, piece. Or DevTools. Or DevTools, thanks. Uh, you're going to have to, to test, test it out. Um, in case you're using DevTools, the most important thing is that uh, you are able to display the little WebAuthn panel um, in your application. But this is all documented. So I think from now on, Haley, we could like, uh, you know, uh, take 10 minutes and let everybody uh, set up or, you know, grab some water or whatever, uh, take a good break uh, if you're already set up, and then come back um, at uh, 40 pass. And uh, hopefully by then everybody is, is all set up. If you're blocked, um, ask your questions on the chat and we'll be ha uh, happy to unblock you. So I think, Haley, you can, um, if you're fine, just like playing a little break music. Everybody, we can still hear you. You can still keep watching right on the chat. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and let's, let's, uh, let's continue. Uh, yeah, The next question, I'm checking out the answer right now. I'm not too sure, but we're checking it out. Just hold on for a moment. Um, so, phone as a security is not an excellent thing. So in that case, either um, you have a pretty physical security, 
uh, in that case, please use that. And if you don't have a physical security key, you're going to have to, on Linux, you're going to have to use the DevTools interface. This is also linked in the setup document. Um, does that answer the question? Oh yeah, the music is louder now. Can you hear me better now? Hayley, would you be able to pause the music for a second, please? Thank you. Uh, yes, so to the Linux question, um, right now phone as a security key is not enabled on Linux. So you have two options. If you're on Linux, you can either use a physical security key if you have one. And if you don't have one, you're going to have to use the DevTools interface. Does that answer the question? Great, noted, thanks. Um, I think we can resume the music. Yeah, you can resume the music. Thanks. Yeah, so one, one more minute and then we'll be uh, continuing. So in case you're stuck in the setup steps, uh, please uh, write on the chat so we can help you troubleshoot.
good. So we're at the 10 minutes mark. Um, I hope everybody was able to follow the set of steps. Um, again, if you're stuck, uh, now is a good time to post on the chat. Um, all right, Mutu is saying works with the security key but didn't get the notification in the phone. Um, I suspect it's maybe because of a mismatched um, user account. Uh, but I'm, I'm thinking, you know, if you have it working with the security key, use the security key for the workshop. Um, and then we can, you know, later help you help you troubleshoot that. Awesome, great, uh, cool. So yeah, let's uh, let's continue. Um, let me check. Uh, few notes um, that will be useful for the coding piece. We're entering now the coding parts. Um, just in case, um, I'll be uh, pasting in a minute in the chat uh, the actual workshop steps. So this is really more of a, um, a plan B document in case you know you're lost on one of the steps and like uh, lose track, uh, because hopefully we should be able to all stay together and just uh, follow me and that should work out. But in case uh, something goes wrong, uh, this document should be helpful. I will be posting it. I or Melissa will be posting it on the on the chat in a minute. It's actually the same doc as the setup uh, doc. So forget what I said. Uh, if you scroll down at the bottom of the setup document. There is something called a section called during the workshop, and this is your uh, this is your helper section in case you know you're stuck in between two steps. Okay. Mod Akash has a question. Yes. He has registered successfully, but not able to log in. Can you give us more info? Um, hmm, let me check. Um, Akash, would you mind uh, giving a little more details, like where did you try registering, and where where were you not able to log in, and what are you using? And as you write that, I will I will continue um, as you as you uh, you know share more information to help you troubleshoot. I'll continue with the workshop steps. Okay. Um, quick disclaimer: uh, you will see. You know, I mentioned like that the first uh, login steps uh, here is uh, is a password entry. Uh, we don't actually check the password in the code just because we don't want to store a password in that demo page. And it's not actually checked for correctness. Obviously, uh, in real application, you would actually check for password correctness. It's kind of a little nicer. Um, and uh, all right, um, let me pause here. Um, the credential operation and call promise, I think. Um, could you try, please? Uh, this is actually not useful. I think for this now. is an error you can ignore for now yeah. because it's. Uh, I think it's an error in the documentation code yes. lab, and it should work fine with mods example. Yeah, exactly. So this is if you got to that step, you're good. Yeah, exactly. If you if you can see the little web authent panel showing, and if you can click the button that says enable uh, emulator authenticator, for now you're good. Um, if you still encounter issues later, let us know. But for now, this should be fine. Um, Akash, still feel free to share more details about where you're stuck so we can help you troubleshoot. Well, I'll keep on. Um, second disclaimer, we're only doing in this backend some basic security checks. So we're doing uh, CSRF checks and we're doing some input sanitizing. But there are lots of things you know, that are not in there because it's just a demo. For example, we don't check for retries on the password, which uh, you know is not checked for correctness anyway. But I guess the, the takeaway is don't use that code in, in prod, right? Um, uh, finally, in general, it's a good idea for users to uh, have uh, two plus security keys. And if you're using your phone, it can act as one security key, but not as several. Uh, we're entering here a little bit the realm of account recovery. So it's not too relevant maybe for now. But the um, summary of that is if you end up uh, implementing WebAuthn in, in your application, you want to make sure that people have actually several, uh, several um, uh, authenticators uh, or several register uh, credentials registered for authenticators. Um, this is more of a side note. Um, some commands you're going to need for this workshop is how to comment or uncomment a block of code. Uh, this is the same as in Visual Studio Code if you're using code. Uh, either command slash on Mac and control slash on Windows and Linux, I guess. Right. Um, quick pause here just to help folks troubleshoot. Okay, no more, no more alerts here. So let's continue. And um, an important thing is uh, I'll come to that in a minute and I'll be sharing my screen. Um, 
make sure to open your little demo application in a separate window because if you um, test it out next to your code, uh, there's an, um, a behavior that's intended with WebAuthn, but that will make it so that it's not going to work in your next to the code window. So just open your code in a new window uh, and do it the way I will, I will show you. Um, and I think with that, we are done for the setup and we can actually move on and write some actual code and look at some actual code um again if anybody is stuck you know where to write so um the first thing you're going to do that i've already done actually um is uh you're going to navigate to the starter code uh which i'll paste right now in the chat so you're going to go there on glitch and uh, you should see in the UI of uh, Glitch a button that enables you to um, remix, remix this project. As you can see here, so you will click that button. It's either here or in a, uh, you know, in a purple area on the top right of the screen. So you're going to click Remix. And this will create a new uh, project for you which will have some sort of random name mm -hmm. um, sometimes glitch is a little slow uh, preparing projects so I'll give you some time here Yeah, um, Akash, I think the issue may come from the fact that you don't have the same account potentially on the on your laptop and phone. So I would suggest either uh, use a security key um, if you if you have one, because we don't really have time to get into the details of troubleshooting now. So either use a security key if you have one, or um, or you're going to uh, use the DevTools UI in order to follow the workshop. Um, great. Cool. Um, so uh, hopefully at this point, everybody should have been able to clone the code. Um, so this is where, where you should, you know, this is what things should look like for you. As I mentioned, you can see this preview here of the application. Don't use that. Close that window already because this will fail. Uh, instead, what you're going to do is open this application in a new window. Sounds good, Akash. Um, please write if you encounter any other issue. So um, what this should look like right now is you have your, uh, we have our code here and here on the on an app open uh, just in the next step, the actual deployed uh, application for that code. And sorry, I didn't mention Glitch is, as you've already understood, um, it's, um, it's a platform where you can live edit code. And it also instantly deploys the code you've just edited, which is kind of uh, which is kind of awesome. Um, so the way this is going to work across the workshop is we're going to do some code edits here, and you're going to just reload your page here, and the changes are going to be reflected uh, live deployed on the web, uh, which is cool. Right. So um, hopefully everybody should be there. Uh, let's explore just quickly the code we have here. Um, Today, we're going to spend most of our time uh, in this file here, which is called all of that client.js, and it's basically client-side authentication code. Um, and we will also spend time on our views uh, because we do have some logics on our views. You will see that the code is very vanilla. This is intended. It's just for us to make sure that we just focus on web authentication code this is, uh, you know, this is, uh, we didn't invent uh, anything special when it comes to, you know, rendering. We're using the very basics and just vanilla JavaScript. Um, so we have uh, this file here, um, you know, make a note of that because uh, we will be spending a little bit of time in that file. And we have a few other interesting files. The first one is index.html. This one is the file where this is the, you know, the HTML file for 
uh, this this uh, you know index page to sign up or sign in in the sign in form. Um, you will also notice across the codes uh, a little octopus um, emoji with some step numbers. This will be this will be actually the workshop steps. So um, just make note of this. Um, another view file uh, we have here as account.html. So you know this is the actual account uh, page. And finally, we have um, you know the second factor page that we're you know not using right now. Um, that will be prompting the user for the second factor. Um, a few other interesting things potentially are uh, libs. So in the libs, we have uh, auth.js, which is uh, taking care. Uh, this is the actual backend code, right? And you will notice that it relies uh, partly. Uh, it does use as a dependency um, uh, the simple web and server from FIDO2. So this is the FIDO, FIDO server implementation I told you about. You can see we're importing it as a dependency. Um, and um, we will have a chance to look a little bit at the code, uh, at the code in there, uh, but probably not make any edits here. Um, and what else do we have? Um, another potentially interesting one is the um, server JS. Again, for this workshop, we will not uh, make too many, will not make any edits actually into this file, but um, just highlighting here that uh, in here you can find authentication logic that you may be already familiar with. We're checking for quick expiration. We're making sure that the user only can only access the account page um, if they are actually properly authenticated uh, and so on. So um, this behavior, it's not magic. It's just already kind of here in this uh, boilerplate code. Great. Um, quick pause here. Um, great. I don't see any questions. So as long as we don't see anything in the chat, we'll continue with the workshop. So let's uh, let's actually get started. So the first thing we're going to do is, um, as you can see right now, uh, I can have uh, whoops. Da -da -da -da. I'm going to just play around a little bit and like uh, you know create like a dummy account. So that's all we have right now. So the first thing we want to do is actually enable the user to create a credential, which can be used for two-factor authentication. Um, in order to do that, um, the very first thing we're going to do is to create uh, a utility function uh, in our client-side authentication um, uh, file. So I'm going to go to the first thing you're going to do is um go to um auth that client that js and if you go to line 49 if you scroll down a little bit you will find uh something called step two step one was just forking the code so you've already done that and this is step two we will um and comment that code right so i'm using the comment um slash comment here and uh, what we've just done here, we, we've just implemented uh, the code to actually register credential. This is just utility code. So um, the most important code in there, we're doing a few things here, just walking through the steps. Um, the first thing we're doing is we're actually fetching some credential creation options from the server. I'll come to that in a minute. We'll look at what these are. Uh, but this is import important to uh, have in mind that when you're registering a credential, you are going to first ask for the server from some, uh, for some credential creation options. Um, you're going to have to decode these options because they come in encoded. Uh, here again, um, this is not a web uh, API. This is actually code that we've imported from a helper, um, a helper uh, you know, file here. We have encoding.js. Those are just utility function to do the encoding decoding because it's not the most interesting when it comes to WebAuthn. But keep in mind that these options uh, you know, will, come, um, will come back encoded. So we're going to have to decode them. And um, then you're going to, uh, this is the most important call here. It's a navigator that credential that creates. So you can recognize here uh, that this is a web API. And upon calling that uh, with um, credential creation options as a parameter, um, what will happen is that the browser will prompt the user um, to touch their security key or uh, you know tap the right button on their phone. Oh, um, please don't edit that code. <laughs> um, sorry. Um, 
I'll okay. Sorry, just sorry. I'll I'll like <laughs> remove rights. You can still see that code, but uh, don't edit it. Um, yeah. So this is the most important call. This will actually uh, this will actually prompt the user to touch their security key or or phone, and uh, then once you've made that call successfully, uh, you end up with a credential, and what you will do is uh, send it back, uh, encode it to the backend. Which you can do, which you can see here. Uh, right. So um, let me check. Um, I would like to briefly, maybe. Uh, take a look with you at the credential creation options. Like, what is that about, right? So let let us check. Um, actually, I should do that here. Sorry. Let's look at our credential creation options. Um, sorry, just a moment. Step two. Step two, right. This is the good I, I was, I wanted to uncomment here. So this is what we just done. And before we move on, let's just briefly look at our um, credential creation options. Um, just so you know what this is about. Um, check. So we're getting this from our, from our backend. Uh, the reason I just want to tell you a little bit about this because these are, these are you can think of this as the security settings for your uh, for your application. Um, so whatever I will show you now may uh, you know you may want to tweak that depending on your security model and what kind of credentials you want to ask for. Uh, but uh, basically, I'll walk you through a few other interesting uh, options in there. So um, the credential creation options are we have you have several of these. The first one is the Relying party ID. So this is really like the name of your application. And if you remember, we said that credentials were scoped to a certain origin. This is what makes them uh, phishing resistant. And this is why the relying party name and ID are, uh, this is how they're used, right? So here the RPID is going to be the, the host name. Um, so in my case, you know, it's going to be narrow mangrove train that glitched at me and whatever, uh, whatever your forked application. Um, uh, name is uh, this will be the the RP the relying party ID for you. Uh, other interesting things are um, for your security settings around uh, you know what kind of authenticator you want to allow. Um, one of them that's interesting is user verification. So right now for this workshop we only have basic security keys that only requires uh, you know you to touch them. Um, you may want to have more, you know, stronger security and actually ask for a biometric uh, security keys. And in that case, you would change, uh, you would change this very setting. I'm kind of running through them here because, like, the best thing is um, to, you know, check them in detail and check the documentation. But the key thing is for you to understand that these authenticator selection options are uh, how much security, like, wh what do you want to, what, do you, what kind of authenticators do you want to allow, and what kind of credential you want to allow for your application. Um, let me check if this one is interesting. Um, yeah, this one is interesting. So for this workshop, we said we would be using roaming keys. So either um, secu physical security keys or a phone. Um, so this translates in the WebAuthn API as something that's called cross-platform, because you can use them across platforms. Um, if you wanted to instead have a built-in built authenticator, you would need to set that to something else. Um, there are a bunch of other uh, interesting ones, but I will just like go a little quicker here. Uh, the only last thing I want to kind of show you here in the credential options is um, it's it's here we're coming into the UX and UI best practices. So you wanna you wanna encourage folks to only uh, register per security key only once only one credential because otherwise the UI to select. A given credential for a security key is complicated. So um, basically, this is what this allows. Here we're telling, hey, uh, upon credential creation, uh, I don't want my user to be able to create a credential on a security key where they already have a credential for my application. And this way, you ensure that you only have your users only have one credential per security key. Um, yeah. There are a bunch of other interesting options, but for now, uh, this is it. So 
uh, all we've done so far is just we've you know uncommented a piece of code uh, on the on the of that client so that was step two we're not using that function at all for now so let's go ahead and actually use it um right so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to account.html. Um, and the first thing you will do is you will look at line uh, 45. And you will see that there is some comment about here HTML code. Um, that is just basically uh, a button that says add a credential. So the first thing you will do is you will comment this out. OK. Uh, so. So far, so good. Well, all we do is have we have a button that does nothing right now, right? Um, so the next step, what we want to do is actually hook that button to the credential um, uh, registration function we have created. Um, so for that, you're going to uh, stay in the account that is HTML file and declare a function that's register, which is uh, you know already called upon um, the registration button click like this guy here. So we'll just comment it out. Um, so let me do that. This is uh, step four. So please uh, comment everything that is on there. And we'll talk about what this does in a minute. If you like formatted code, you can click the format file button and glitch. So yeah, here's what this does. Yeah, it basically just adds a, event, a click event handler to the register button, um, and it calls the register credential function we have created. Uh, cool. So let's see if it works out. So go over to the uh, to your um, deployed application. You can reload it, and now you're going to I'm going to open DevTools to see if you know everything goes well. Let's check. Great. Uh, I'm going to click the button, add a credential. And here you can see that I am prompted uh, to select in between these two methods. Depending on uh, what you ended up using, this may look a little bit different for you. I think it also depends on the platform you're on. I think on Windows, this may look a little bit different. Um, but the important thing is that you, as a user, you should be prompted at that moment in time to perform an action that will create a credential. So I'm going to select a uh, USB security key because this is what I'm using. And now it's asking me to touch my security key. It's already plugged in uh, for me. So I'm going to go ahead and just touch it. And nothing happens. I can only trust that the credential has been created. We will come to that in a moment. Something happened, but like I can't see my credentials. And we would like to see our credentials displayed, right? Um, so what you're going to do next um, is uh, briefly and comments a uh, piece of code that is dedicated to displaying available credentials for that user. So um, in account.html, um, you will see uh, Octopus step five, so line 140. So you can uncomment all the code that is between this uh, line 140 and line 140, um, 54. Mm -hmm. Cool. So we have that function available now. And now what we want to do is actually call it to make sure uh, you know, our credentials are displayed. So you will scroll up and uh, do two things. The first thing is you will actually call this update credential list function at the end of register, basically after a successful try catch. And the second thing is we also want to display our credentials, available credentials on page load. So we'll just call that function once uh, on page load. So for that, you can uncomment the code that is on line 67. Um, now that we've done that, hopefully, yes. So um, it automatically reloaded the page, by the way. Glitch does that when you update your code. So you can see that it actually fetches, uh, fetched the available credentials for me. So it uh, is displaying the credential we've just created. Now, let me pause here for a second and uh, ask you folks if uh, this is working out for you. Um, were you able to create a credential successfully? And can you see your credential being displayed? Or rather, say something if it's not the case. Yes, I have a yes. Love it. Good. Yes, 
that sounds good thumbs up awesome don't be shy if you're stuck works good woohoo it works yeah nathan i'm just as happy as you are cool uh cool good good so um it's looking pretty good at least for those of you who posted mm -hmm. on the chat do you want to it works for me as well it works, it works for me <laughs> too so we're good uh, maybe it's time to show the dev tools yeah maybe it's time to show the dev tools so um that sounds good um i'll try and show uh you how it works with the dev tools option um so the first thing i need to do actually i was um i probably should have a ah, web authent so i already have this tab here um, and if you don't have it go to more options yeah let me find more tools and then web authent thank you so um three dots at the top exactly the three dots thank you so if you don't see that whoops i think the other three dots at the top right oh yeah okay ah cool so here thank you uh more tools and here you have web authent Whoops, more tools, web of them. And I even think if you do command shift P, you can look for web of them. Uh, this is the same shortcut as in as in code. But so three dots, more tools, web of them. Everybody, uh, if you're not using uh, the DevTools panel, just uh, you know bear with us for a second. We just want to show how it works for those of you who are those of you who are using uh, DevTools. So you know, sip your water and uh, and just hold on for a second um i'm gonna enable the virtual authenticator environments uh and i'm gonna add a new authenticator this is a little bit like if i was buying a new security key right so i'm gonna do that right mm -hmm. then uh no credentials were created so what i'm gonna do is um Click the button again and see how it goes when I create a credential. Yeah, so you can see something happened here. Um, DevTools knows that, oh, you have this virtual authenticator. Uh, Giorgio, yes, um, good to know that you had to reload. If anybody is encountering an error, you can reload. Uh, so here you can see that this was actually, this is also successful with DevTools. You can see here your credential pop up, and hopefully it also shows up here. Um, another thing is that uh, we're not showing the code for that, but it's kind of convenient. You want your users, this is a best practice for UX UI, you want your users to be able to remove the credentials they've created because, you know, maybe they've lost their security key or just, you know, they're using another one. So uh, I, won't go to show, I won't show the code for that, uh, but um, you can check it out in the, in the code later. You can, I'm going to go and remove that just to start on a clean slate. Um, Cool. Uh, another interesting thing I'll show. So that was for DevTools. Uh, DevTools parenthesis is closed. I think we've showed the basics. Yeah. Great. So if we can. Everyone had issues. Now's the time to speak. Yeah, exactly. As always. Um, and now what we're going to do, I'm, I'm going to keep on with my security key now. So I'm going to add a credential again. Uh, great. Something interesting will happen. I'm just going to show you briefly what happens. Try it out also. What happens if you try adding a credential again? Um, it's going to throw you an error. It's going to say, hey, the user attempted to register an authenticator that contains one of the credentials already registered. If you remember, in the previous step, we had this thing called exclude credentials. So this behavior actually is intentional for us. We don't want users to be able to register two credentials for the same authenticator. So this is work as intended. Obviously, like in a real application, you would you know, deal with errors in a nicer way, because this is, oh, you cannot see the, um, Oh, interesting. So you cannot see the browser pop-ups, right? Hmm. Uh, okay, so I will describe to you what I see. Um, I can see like a native browser window pop-up uh, and telling me that there was an error. Um, you cannot see it on screen share apparently right now. Um, but if you try it out on your side, you should see something similar. Um, great. All right, let's move on. So what do we have now? Okay, we have been able to um, create a credential. Um, what we will do now uh, is, you know, 
what we're displaying right now is the credential ID, which honestly uh, is ugly, right? And it's also not human readable. Like, you know, it's difficult for people to read something like that. So uh, what we would like to do instead is enable people to give credentials names, which are, you know, things humans are better at as uh, long strings. So what we will do next is um, go to account.html. And uh, this is step seven. You're going to go to line 115, and you can uncomment all of the codes uh, between line 115 and 137. Nothing about breaking. Um, you know, we're just checking that the name is right. The only interesting piece here, because like this is code you probably all already know how to write. The interesting here uh, uh, thing here is uh, I will show you in the AuthJS is that by default, the WebAuthn API doesn't support uh, naming credentials. So this is something you will have to um, set up yourself. So you're just going to have to uh, add in your backend server just a new field for uh, you know name, uh, not username, but say, uh, uh, check. Yeah, probably that. So this is about credential creation. Um, we're you know making it an empty name, which is why uh, you can only see a named here. But the bottom line is like, uh, this is not included in, in the credential and this is not part of the uh, native API. You know, you will have to, um, this is the best practice for your users to actually enable them to name credentials and um, also to rename them. So, uh, you know, today in this workshop, we will not uh, show that, uh, but make sure that, you know, you also enable people to rename their credentials if they made a typo or whatever. So, um, where were we? We were here. Um, we were on step uh, seven, where we just uncommented the um, rename function. So I'm going to go back to account.html. And then um, we need to actually use that function because uh, you know we're not using it right now. So what you can do is uh, copy the code that is between uh, lines 99 and 102. So you are going to copy that. And uh, you will replace what is on line 77 by that new code which does the same, but um, it also calls a uh, rename uh, upon um, successful uh, registration. So you just first create a credential and then rename it. Down the rules, you could also ask for a name before credential creation um, or, you know, just rename it after uh, the credential creation has been successful. Um, the web end spec is not, you know, doesn't say anything, doesn't give specific directions about that. You can do one or the other. They propose both. Um, so, right, so we have now rename function and uh, we're enabling the user to actually rename the credential they just created. So let's see how that behaves. Um, I'm going to remove that credential just to, you know, to show you what happens when I create a new one. Feel free to do the same and add a new credential. Again, apparently you cannot see um, my uh, like the native browser window pop up on my screen. What I see right now is a browser window asking me to name this credential. Hopefully, you should be able to see the, the same. So give it whatever name, called like small security key, for example, or whatever. So I'm going to give it a name, and as you can see, I now have a name credential. Um, Code-wise, this is nothing we're ranking, but it's just to show you that it's a good idea to uh, enable users to name credentials. And then it's kind of up to you whether you want to display the credential ID or not. If you do, it may be a good idea to ellipse, uh, you know, basically move away uh, the middle content because uh, like it's just a long string and it's still recognizable if you dot, dot, dot instead of this long string. Um, but it's important just to have a name. Let me briefly pause here. Um, and ask if anybody has a question or is stuck. Uh, were you folks able to, uh, you know, register credentials and uh, rename them, name them? Well, I can only clear the document. Uh, Augustine, um, make sure, please, that you are going through the steps in a new tab, not within Glitch. Um, because the error you just pasted, I saw it when I was trying to make the registration happen within um, within Glitch. So uh, don't use 
uh, don't use, uh, you know, what is it called? Yeah. Don't don't like uh, don't do your user interaction in in this in in this part. Just really like open it in a new window. And if you do that, hopefully this error should go away. Uh, Stefano, yeah, works great. So Augustine, please try this out and let us know if it worked. Uh, Chris, interesting. Just an observation that the ID is infinitely shorter for the USB key than a phone. Um, good. Um, Good observation. I, I didn't have that in mind actually for today, so this is good to know. Thank you for sharing. Um, definitely something to keep in mind for the UI too, actually, right? Yeah, exactly. Wanna, yeah. Um, cool. So we see yeses, right? Uh, we'll keep an yeah. eye on the chat. I'm sure it works for all. Yeah, did it work for you? It worked for me, so <laughs> for, for Melissa. <laughs> okay. Uh, cool. Uh, let's continue then. Um, we are a little short on time, but it's all good because we're basically done with the first part. The most important thing is, uh, you know, enabling users to create credentials. So um, I'll try and, um, you know, go through the next steps a little quicker. Um, and uh, now that we have, uh, now, that, now that we have our credentials, uh, this is cool. But you know, if I sign out as uh, Bob right now, we don't have yet this thing where I'm actually asked for my credential for my second factor. Actually, this kind of breaks altogether because like the code is wired up so so that here, because I have a second factor uh, set up, um, I'm expected to enter a second factor uh, and like touch my credential and uh, you know give in my credential. Um, but right now we haven't done the UI wiring to actually ask the user for a second factor. So this is going to be uh, just not working. So let's do it now. Um, moving on to uh, actually implementing the second factor authentication. Um, this should be much lighter than the first part. So let's go ahead. Um, you're going now to go to uh, public auth client JS, you know, or um, buy it for utility functions for um, authentication. And you can uncomment the lines 85 to 95. This is our step nine. Uh, here, we don't have time to go too much into the details, but we're like fetching options from server. And the most important call here is a navigator that credential that gets. When this is called, the browser, uh, when, you, when you call that, what will happen is that the browser will actually uh, prompt, again, the user to uh, touch their secure security key or uh, touch the right button on their phone. And uh, once you do that, um, uh, you know, uh, the code will get like a credential out of that and we'll be able to send uh, this credential um, to the server for verification. So we've uncommented that. Again, it's just a utility function that we're exporting. So uh, awesome. Um, so right now, what we need to do is uh, go and actually use it. Um, so uh, what we will do is um, first, Go to index.html. So what we will do here is uh, we want to make sure that when the user actually has a second factor registered, they are redirected to a second factor authentication page. So at, as you can see right now, uh, we are not doing that. So what you can do is you can um, uncomment uh, the lines 105 until 111. And you will see that what this does is it checks if um, what the authentication status is. Um, the authentication status is just an object we're keeping track of in the back end to, um, this is like a session tracker uh, to check uh, where, uh, what is your authentication setup like. If it's complete, it means that if you only have one factor set up, um, your password was correct. But if you have two factors set up, um, authentication status is only complete um, if the second factor also has been entered. Again, the best thing if you're interested in that is you go and check the code later. But most important thing is uh, if you need a second factor, what you're, we're going to do is uh, redirect you to the second factor um, page. Great. Um, and then, um, just a moment, sorry. Yeah, okay, that's a, that's an important one. Um, 
Okay, we'll look at that in a minute. So back to index.html. Um, now, um, let's see what is what this gives us. Let's briefly check. Um, so let me just uh, let me just check it out. So I'm Bob. Try it out also on your site. Um, Chris, I'll get your we'll get to your question in a second. Um, first, try out the code you just added. So now we know that Bob has a credential registered. So normally they should uh, redirect me to the second factor page, which it does. It's good, but at the moment we are not actually using our second factor authentication code. So if you click that button, it does nothing, um, which is not what we want. So we will like fix this in a second. But make sure that the behavior is right and that you are able to see the second factor authentication page. Great. Um, quick pause here just to get to Chris's question. Uh, Chris, I say it's not it's not a blocking question. Let's let's get back to it in the end. Um, moving on. Um, this is actually the last step, I think. Yes. Uh, what we're going to do now is um, go over to second factor that HTML. And what you will do is end comment uh, all the code uh, that's between line four, uh, 54 and 69. So end comment all of that. Let's talk briefly about what it does. Uh, the first interesting thing is it actually calls our utility function that we have just implemented uh, in authentic client.js. You know, the one that actually makes the navigator credential that get call. So uh, this is the first interesting thing. And then it's going to look at uh, the authentication status and the response um, and check if it's actually complete, which would mean that authentication was successful. Um, there's an important piece that we haven't really talked about, but that I would love to show you now um, is um, look at what actually happens, what, what happens in the back end when we do that. How is verification uh, taking place, right? How do you know that the user's credential has been uh, is correct? Um, so let's have, take a brief look at that. Um, I think if we look at, yes, that's where we were already. So if you look at in of that JS, uh, or you can just look at my screen if it's easier, because we don't, uh, we're not going to edit any code here. The most important call here is that is this verification call. So here we're relying on our FIDO2 server implementation, which is our library. And we're calling this function that in the, in, for that library they call verify assertion response. And this is really just like credential correctness, a credential validity verification. So um, you give a number of uh, parameters in, one is the credential of course, um, but uh, there's also uh, a challenge aspect um, that I don't really have time to explain, but you can think of it as a, the challenge is useful to protect from uh, credential theft in the, in the sense that you always want to check just in time that the person, uh, the credential you just received was actually sent to you from a person who uh, actually um, owns the private key um, and has been basically signing this challenge on the fly at the moment in time when you requested it. This is a little quick, all of that in the documentation. Uh, so if you're, if you're curious about that, uh, you can read up. Um, you also have a bunch of other things like the expected origin, as we mentioned, credentials are scoped to specific origins. So this is going to be checked um, and more, but this is an important bit. Right, so this is what happens under the hood. So if we're going back to second factor, this was step 11, which is actually our last step. Uh, so now hopefully our second factor page actually does something and upon, uh, upon um, user, uh, navigation to this page will actually be able to prompt the user for their credential. So let me reload that page. Do it also from your site, try it out. So log in as the same user as uh, before, the one that had a credential. Mm -hmm. uh, click next. Um, and here um, we have this button uh, where you know you're going to have to tap it to use a security key. Um, Oh yeah, it's using DevTools. Sorry, let me disable the virtual authenticator environment. Just a moment. Um, I'm going to create a new credential uh, just because I had both DevTools and the security key and this messed up things a little bit. So let me try again. Uh, this is still Bob. I'm gonna enter my password. 
I'll be prompted. So I'm going to tap this button. Uh, and I'm going to pick security key. I just touched it and uh, now was able to successfully log in. Hopefully, you should see the same thing going on for you. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, Chris, your question with Mood. OK, noted. Uh, yes. Can everybody, uh, was everybody able to go through these steps? Yes. Great. It works. It works. Yep. Awesome. Mm, a request is already pending. Mutu, I have not seen that error before. I would try, you know, just like hard reloading the page and like signing out and trying to sign in again. I'm not sure what this is about. Okay, sounds good. Cool. Um, working out for everybody? Anybody stuck? It works from my side. Good. Works on my machine, right? <laughs> OK, cool. Uh, it's good because we're actually coming close to the end of our workshop, if I'm not wrong about yeah, time. Yeah, five more minutes. Five more minutes. Cool. So hard reloads work. <laughs> Always does, right? Good. So um, we are actually done with the very basics of WebAuthn. Uh, so this is good. Yay, congrats, everyone. Yeah, yeah congrats, everybody. Uh, well done. Um, let's take a few moments to, to wrap up. Um, these are changes. Uh, Giorgio, should I time that or was not allowed? Uh, unfortunately, we don't have time right now to, ah, got at the first test. But I understand Giorgio work for you at the second. Yes. OK. Like work. Awesome. So um, of course, we didn't have time for uh, you know the extra things. Good to know. Thanks, Giorgio. Um, so let's wrap up. Uh, we have a few more minutes. So let's, let's wrap up. Uh, great. Thank you. Good to hear. Um, if you want to learn more about that, this was really just the very basic. So if you want to learn more about that, um, please follow like Promium Dev or, or me on Twitter because we'll be soon posting a first uh, written and more advanced tutorial version of this code lab. Um, soon means you know in the next weeks at some point. So it will contain you know more detailed explanation about, uh, for example, the credential creation options and like all of this other stuff. And um, this workshop is recorded, so we'll also be posting the recording. But for you, it would be more like a repeat, so maybe less interesting. Um, if you have a question about WebAuthn, um, ask it on Discord. We have a Discord channel that is specifically for Chrome Developer Summit. Um, we'll be posting the link uh, on the chat. Do you mind posting the link? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, I have it right here. Awesome. Thank and you. I'm there to answer any questions. Yeah, Milica is in there. Uh, we're in there, so please ask your web of questions. Uh, thank you, Milica. Awesome. So join us on Discord. We have a dedicated channel for security and privacy. So join us there. And uh, yeah, thanks so much, everybody, for joining. It was it was really cool to see everybody uh, logging in from different parts of the world. Yes, it was a very fun workshop. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Juan. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Uh, stick around for CDS. It's always good to see you. And uh, and yeah, we're, we're in touch, and we'll see you around, everybody. Thank you. Bye. See you. Bye. <laughs>